The Jurassic World franchise has come a long way from the original 1993 classic. We got a whole Jurassic World beyond any contained island, but here's the catch. Dinosaurs and humans now have to share that world together. With the latest Jurassic movie on the horizon to end the story, let's see what got us here. Welcome to Jurassic World Dominion, the story so far presented by Universal Orlando Resort. Welcome to Jurassic Park. It all started right here at Jurassic Park, except it didn't. It started years before when scientists started experimenting with genetic research, cloning specifically, and they devised a way to bring back the dinosaurs. All they had to do was get some dino DNA. And thus, InGen was born. John Hammond, a man who believed in sharing the majesty of dinosaurs with the world, worked very hard to make Jurassic Park a first-of-its-kind high-tech theme park where dinosaurs live, breathe, and bite a reality. Except, understandably, it's extremely dangerous and they need proof of a very scary concept. That brings us to 1993's Jurassic Park. Hammond's lawyer says Jurassic Park needs the endorsements of some bona fide dino experts. So he finds them in known raptor enthusiast Dr. Alan Grant, respected paleobotanist Dr. Ellie Sattler, and undeniably sexy chaos theorist Dr. Ian Malcolm. He flies them all out to his advanced base on Isla Nublar. These theme park dinos can't reproduce, and whatever gaps Hammond science nerds found in the dino DNA, they filled in with frog DNA, a trivial detail that in no way will become important later. Hammond sends the park guests on a perfectly harmless park tour. Meanwhile, Dennis Nedry, a computer programmer working for InGen, cut a secret deal with a corporate rival to steal dinosaur embryos. To do this, he has to shut down the park security system, and it all works out great. Psych! No, it doesn't! Nedry dies, like, immediately, while elsewhere on the island, Malcolm, Grant, and Hammond's grandchildren, Lex and Timmy, are all outside the T-Rex pen when the electric fence surrounding it gets deactivated and it gets out, and surprise, it wants to kill everyone. They barely get away, and Dr. Grant comes to see that nature indeed found a way. Remember the frog DNA? Yeah, it basically allowed the dinos to reproduce. Also, it turns out raptors are just as smart as they are hungry. Clever girl. Lex restores the computer system so they can finally call for help. There is one final showdown in the visitor center, and when all seems lost, the T-Rex Kool-Aid mans in and kills the raptors while the remaining humans escape. <laughs> Everyone who is alive leaves, and the park does not become a reality. Shocker. Bet that won't happen again, except... Mommy's very angry. Four years later, John Hammond no longer leads InGen. His nephew, Peter Ludlow, does, and he thinks it'd be cool to try the dino theme park idea again, this time in San Diego. Turns out there are dinosaurs that got free on Isla Sorna, an island close to Isla Nublar, where much of the original research and dino manufacturing took place. Hammond reaches out to Dr. Ian Malcolm for help in stopping the new Jurassic Park plan with a team of experts who can hopefully observe the dinosaurs on Isla Sorna and rally the public into stopping the San Diego expansion. Malcolm is joined by his girlfriend, Dr. Sarah Harding, and his daughter, Kelly, who is super into gymnastics. Team Malcolm runs into an InGen hunter team on Isla Sorna, and some dinosaur activists free captured dinos, leading to explosions and dino rampages. Two human teams band together to survive, but many of them get raptured. Raptured. Eaten. <laughs> Whatever. Ian and company make it off the island and back to San Diego, where InGen just shipped a super pissed off T-Rex. Ian and Sarah lure the T-Rex back to the boat, but the super hands-on InGen CEO gets killed in the process. Oh no. The T-Rexes go back to Isla Sorna, and Hammond advocates for leaving them all alone there. No human intervention. Sounds like a plan. Except... Alan. Four more years have passed since The Lost World and Isla Sorna is off limits, except it totally isn't, and illegal paragliding boat tours go around it like all the time. Dr. Grant gets approached by a couple who claim to be wealthy and want to fund a dig he wants to do as long as he goes with them for an aerial view of Isla Sorna. 
sounds okay, but this deal gets worse all the time as it's not just a flyover, it's a land on, and they even knock Alan out to pull this off. They're a divorced couple who really want Alan to find their missing son who disappeared on the island on one of those stupid paragliding tours. Dr. Grant finds the boy after being separated over the course of several dinosaur attacks that all involved could have probably avoided by simply listening to Dr. Grant in the first place, including his assistant who stole raptor eggs and was causing the raptors to pursue them almost the whole time. They make their way to a canal boat ride and find a satellite phone from their supplies. Alan makes contact with Ellie Sattler, returns the raptor eggs, and gets rescued in just the nick of time by the team Ellie sent. Some pterodons fly by, perhaps looking for new nesting grounds. <laughs> Surely now, human intervention won't aid their survival and speed along our own hubristic demise? Thank you, <laughs> you know what? You all deserve to be eaten by dinosaurs. I'm team dinosaur now. 22 years after the original Jurassic Park, John Hammond's dream is officially realized as a fully functional dinosaur theme park for the very wealthy. Brothers Zack and Gray arrive to spend the holidays at the resort park with their aunt, Claire Deering, who is the park's operations manager. Claire shows off the Indominus Rex, a new genetically modified hybrid dinosaur designed to be the ultimate hunter. Jurassic World's owner advises Claire to have Owen Grady, an ex-Navy behaviorist and current Raptor team captain, make sure the Irex's paddock is secure. When they go to examine the paddock, it appears the Irex is missing. Psych! The Irex is in there and she massacres most of the group before escaping. Dino chaos ensues everywhere, which is not helped by the InGen Spec Ops team essentially declaring martial law in a theme park, and Owen's Raptor squad sides with the Irex over the humans. Turns out, the Irex is part Raptor, and again, may I repeat, Raptors are dangerous dinosaur geniuses. Owen lures the raptors back to his side, but they aren't enough, so Claire releases our old friend, the T-Rex, who teams up with Blue against the Irex, and with an assist from the Mosasaur, they stop her and reclaim the island. Change is like death. You don't know what it looks like until you're standing at the gates. Three years after we last left off, the Jurassic World theme park is now abandoned and a dormant volcano on Isla Nublar has become active. It will kill all the dinosaurs contained there. John Hammond's old partner, Sir Benjamin Lockwood, offers to help Claire protect the dinos by getting them to a sanctuary island. She enlists Owen Grady to help her, aided by Lockwood's assistant, Eli Mills. Claire's team joins up with expedition guides, who sure seem like big game hunters, and work to round up the dinosaurs. The game hunter seeming guys shoot Blue and put the special raptor in a life-threatening situation, kidnapping Claire's team member, a paleo-veterinarian, to save Blue. So yeah, turns out these are bad dudes. The volcano erupts and all the living humans rush to leave, with of course the dinosaur traffickers stealing some dinos to not take them to a nice farm upstate. Lockwood's assistant Eli is behind the dino trafficking and is now auctioning dinos off to a crowd of what can only be described as supervillains. The star of the auction? The Indoraptor. Remember how the Irex was a genetically manufactured hybrid killing machine abomination asaur? The Indoraptor is a more velociraptor version of her, but the Indoraptor does not follow orders and ruins the auction. Who could have seen that coming? Blue saves the group by killing the Indoraptor, but now there's a new problem. If they don't let the dinosaurs out of their holding area, they'll all die of poison gas. Claire wavers, but ultimately the clone baby granddaughter of Lockwood frees them. Oh, have I not mentioned her until now? Anyway, all the dinosaurs run free, and now humans coexist with dinosaurs. Don't, don't move. And that brings us to the present day part of the Jurassic Park timeline and the end of the story in Jurassic World Dominion. Trailers so far show a world where dinosaurs exist as widely as human beings. Dr. Alan Grant, Dr. Ellie Sattler, and America's sweetheart Dr. Ian Malcolm are back, so maybe the human race has a fighting chance. And hey, feathered dinosaurs! 
Thanks for watching, and for more genetically engineered dinosaurs that shouldn't exist in the first place, here's a real world paleontologist reacting to the Jurassic World Dominion prologue, and don't forget to follow up and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.